talking to you today about the results of the cross, and we've been reading from Colossians chapter 1. Now, when Paul uses words like um, this expression, he made peace through the blood of his cross, and in his body, in the body of his flesh through death, he's talking about what Jesus did on the cross. When he died on the cross, uh, when he shed his blood on the cross, first of all, in, ch in verse 20, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, Paul says that Jesus made peace through the blood of his cross. That means peace between you and God. Jesus did that. You didn't do it. Jesus did it for you. Your part is to believe in that. See, the, the, the point I want to establish in your mind is this. The peace between you and God is not something that you established, and it's not even something that you maintain. It's something that Jesus did for you by the blood of His cross. And though you, make mis you might make mistakes, and you might sin, and you might do some things wrong, that doesn't disturb what God has already established. Jesus has already taken your sins and taken them to the cross. And by the blood of His cross, He's taken your sins out of the picture. So even though you might make a mistake, and you might sin, or you might do something wrong, that doesn't disturb what Jesus has already done. Jesus made peace between, between you and God through the blood of His cross. Secondly, in verse 21 it says, we were once alienated and enemies in our mind by wicked works, but now He, Jesus, has reconciled us to God. You see, we were separated from God in our minds. Uh, God has already done something for us, though, in, in, through the cross. It says He has reconciled us to Himself by Jesus. Now, uh, it's really easy to go around and preach to people and say, you need to get right with God. But you know, it's not really fair to tell someone you need to get right with God until you first tell them, you know what, God's already gotten right with you. You know, that's the way Paul does it. Let me read you another verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. And uh, Paul is here talking about what he calls the ministry of reconciliation. In verse 19, 2 Corinthians 5, 19, Paul says, God was in Christ. That was at the cross. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. You know, I think this might be a good thing to tell people in the world, people who think they're alienated from God because of their wicked works. You know, God's already done something for you. He has taken your sins and put them into Jesus, and by that act, uh, He has not imputed your sins to you, but He's imputed them to Jesus. Did you know, and this is a shocking thought to some people, but it was never God's plan. It was never His purpose to punish you for your sins. It was always His plan. It was always His purpose to punish Jesus for your sins and to take your sins and to put them on Jesus and let Jesus pay for them. And so the result is that uh, 2 Corinthians 5.19, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, the Amplified says, but blotting them out. Uh, that's what he did for the world. That's you and me also, if we're in the world. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, if you ask me, if you wanted my opinion about it, this maybe is where God dropped the ball by committing the message to us because we've been such a failure in the church at telling the world that, the, that uh, God has reconciled Himself to them. You see, it's not fair to say to somebody, get right with God until you first say, God's already gotten right with you. Now, look at what he says in verse 20. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, you be reconciled to God. In other words, God has already done something with your sins and taken them away. Now it's your turn. Why don't you get reconciled with God? He's already gotten reconciled with you. You know, it's, it's, it's easy and appealing to get reconciled with God if you understand that God has already taken away all the obstacles. God has already taken away the barriers. He has already taken your sins and disposed of them. So there's really nothing standing between you and God. There's nothing standing between anybody and God. There's nothing standing between assuming a single human being on this earth and God. You can't say to anybody that God is holding their sins against them because He's not. He's already taken their sins and placed them on Jesus. And He's disposed of them and He's committed unto us this message of reconciliation. Now, I've read those two verses from Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 said that God has made peace through the blood of the cross of Christ. Uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 21 says that... Um, he has reconciled us to himself by the death of Jesus. You know, if we just stopped right there and said, uh, that's the end of it, that would be good enough. But he doesn't even stop there. It gets even better than that. Read verse 22. In the body of his flesh through death, comma, and here's the result of that, a result of the cross, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. 
when he says to present you, other translations, I looked it up on several different other translations, that expression, to present you means so that you may be able to stand in his presence and so that he might welcome you into his presence. Remember, this is a result of what Jesus did at the cross when he said it is finished. In the body of his flesh through death, that's the cross. What happened in the body of his flesh through death? Well, the result is to present you uh, so that you might stand in his presence, to invite you into his presence. You see, the reason we can stand in the presence of God as Christians and the reason when your uh, earthly life is finished and your spirit leaves your body, the reason you know for sure and can be certain of the fact that you're going right to the presence of Christ is because that Jesus has already eliminated everything that ever disqualified you. He has already taken your sins away through the blood of His cross. And so He says, uh, to present you, or so that you might stand in His presence, and uh, that He might welcome you into His presence. And then He says, holy unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. The word holy means sanctified and purified. And you know, almost the whole church world thinks that holy means something you do. You need to get holy. Now that you're a Christian, you better get holy. Listen, getting holy is something that Jesus did for you on the cross. He sanctified you by the blood of His cross. You can't improve on what He's already done for you. You know that Paul writes to the Christians at Rome and he says to the saints that be at Rome. The word saints means holy ones. It's the same root word translated holy. He just lumped them all together and called them holy. Why? Because they're in Christ, the holy one. Uh, and the same is true for you. You are holy. You might not know it yet. You might think that's something you're trying to do. I'm trying to get holy. No, you're not. Uh, we need to find out that we are holy. It's easier to live like who we believe we are than try to get that way. Okay, I need to keep moving. Uh, you are holy. And that's through the, a result of the cross. In the body of His flesh, through death, to present you holy. And then He goes on. Unblameable. The word unblameable, if you look it up, it means... Uh, not only, let's see, unblameable and unreprovable, it means not only forgiven, but the absence even of charges or accusations. It means no reproof is necessary. You can't even bring a charge or an accusation against you. That's how thoroughly Jesus has removed your sins. Let me give you another verse now uh, that speaks to this. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says this, speaking of Christ, it says, Who, being the brightness of His glory, the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. When He had by Himself purged our sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. This says that Jesus by Himself purged our sins, and then He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. Now like you, I'm sure you have an idea of what the word purge means. I think I know too, but I looked it up in the dictionary. So let me give you what the dictionary says. Uh, the word purge means, number one, to free from impurities. Number two, to remove impurities by cleansing. Number three, to rid of guilt or sin or defilement. Number four, to clear of a charge or an accusation. Number five, to become clean and pure. Notice that this is something that uh, Hebrews 1.3 says that Jesus did by Himself without our participation, without our help. You know, uh, I've preached this message before and been criticized by actually other ministers uh, who said, well, wait a minute, what are you trying to say? You didn't, you didn't mention repentance. Well, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't write the Bible. Uh, the, the person who wrote this didn't mention it. It's not in the text. It didn't, it didn't say if this or if that, if you do this or that. Uh, it's not in the text. I'm just dealing with what I'm given here. He says, when he had by himself purged our sins. So I think it means, when he says by himself, that means he did it by himself. Now our part is to believe in that. This is the message of the gospel. See, it works like this. Jesus did something for you at the cross, and then preachers are supposed to tell you about it, and then you have the choice of believing it or disbelieving it. My recommendation to you is that you believe it. Now, what would happen if Christians believed this message? Well, if you believe that you have been purified from all defilements and all stains and freed from all clear, cleared from all charges and accusations, number one, it would give you confidence. Number two, it would cause you to stand up and be and walk like the person that God has made you to be. Um, I'm running out of time, so let me summarize. There is, because of the cross, there is now peace between you and God. Because of the cross, God has now reconciled you to Himself. Because of the cross, you can stand in the presence of God holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. And your sins have been purged, and you're now free from all impurities, from guilt or sin or defilement in the sight of God.